Let's be real. Most Nuzlocks are decided by one thing and one thing only. You doing more damage than your opponent. Remember when you were six and you were like, this move doesn't even do damage. Why would I ever use that? Well, you were kind of right. At least in challenge runs like Nuzlocke's, most of the time, the correct play is clicking the move that does the most damage, or switching to something else that does even more. But there are some times when using a move that doesn't do damage is the right play. If you've had a Togetic or a Jigglypuff or any grass type as your encounter in one of your runs, as they level up, you're confronted with a ton of non-damaging moves in their learn sets and need to decide which to keep and which to kick. Today, as the professional Nuzlocker with thousands of hours of experience, I'll be guiding you through those decisions. Along the way, maybe I can help you learn some more advanced strategies for your Nuzlocks when just doing damage isn't quite enough. I've split the entire tier list into different categories to make things a little bit more digestible. If it seems like I've missed some moves at any point, it's because I'll be saving the top 5 moves in the game for the end of the video, so make sure to keep watching for that. The lowest tier here is F tier, and all these moves are defined by just being completely useless. I couldn't find a niche for them in any Nuzlocke. So instead of just listing them all here for you, I've instead hidden the names of all these moves in the following ad read. Try to find all 27 of them. What's that smell? It, it's not poison gas, it's more of a sweet scent, an almost aromatic mist coming from my phone. The mobile games of my life do cause me nightmares and make me hold grudges. I need a miracle. I need an electrifying new game to laser focus on. In comes with a splash, the sponsor of today's video, Empires and Puzzles. This is an award-winning match three puzzle game. There is no embargo here, it's completely free to play, and the gameplay is deceptively simple. It's all about flow, er, shields. I mean shields. Here's how it works. Start. More power. Swap. More power. Split. Split. I need a guard. Swap again. More power. Shift. I need a guard. Shift again. More power. Trick your opponents in heated PvP battles and lock onto the top of the leaderboard. When you win a battle, use the loot to become crafty. Shield tiles and how they move will feel almost like telekinesis or magic. Room for improving your skills, however, will always be there. That might have been a lot to swallow, but there's even more. Celebrate Empire Puzzle's sixth birthday with them. They've added a museum to look at all the cool heroes that you can unlock as you play through the game. You don't have to be a mind reader to see that this game can assist you in having some happy hours. So let's all hold hands and, if you're interested, click the link down in the description to download Empires and Puzzles for iOS or Android. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Oh wait, uh, magnetic flow. Let's get into the first category of actually useful moves, with setup moves. The worst of these require pretty specific situations to activate, but there's some pretty good ones out here too. Let's start with some moves that only boost your defensive stats. None of these moves make it any higher than B tier in my opinion. Critical hits ignore defense boosts, which will always limit the value of these moves, particularly in Nuzlocke's where these Pokemon won't be coming back. The physical defense boosting moves still land in B tier for three reasons. First. While I can't prove this, it feels like you fight more physical attackers than special attackers in Nuzlocke's, and other people that I've talked to agree. Second of all, there is the move Body Press, which is learned by a lot of Pokemon in Gen 8+, Plus, which uses the defense boost to do more damage. Also, the defense boosting moves are more often learned by Pokemon that get the Shell Armor or Battle Armor ability, and preventing crits is what makes boosting your defense actually pretty useful. Mostly, boosting your defense is just kind of a tempo loss though and not really worth it. There is better ways to use a defensive Pokemon to actually advance the battle. What about boosting speed? Although it might seem like the ability to flip turn order and guarantee you go first by boosting your speed can be broken, and uh, speed is a pretty important part of Pokemon, the problem is that you usually aren't getting any value out of these hits to justify the setup turn. It only really makes sense if you're looking to outspeed the next Pokemon your opponent has as well, otherwise you haven't actually gained an advantage because you've used one turn to use the setup move. Most of the time if you want to boost your speed, you also want to boost your attack, and getting agility and swords dance on a Pokemon just isn't that common. Additionally, if you carry two setup moves, you only have two setup moves left for actual coverage, making the sweep a lot worse. So let's talk about boosting your attack. With the exception of some ridiculously specific moves or doubles only moves, boosting your attack is always useful. Everything in A tier grants at least two stages of boosts, whether it's the sharp boost from Nasty Plot and Swords Dance, or the attack and defense boost from Bulk Up at Calm Mind. These are the moves that allow you to set up sweeps and one-shot opponents that you have no business one-shotting. Sweeping opponents with one Pokemon after setting up is an extremely common strategy for intermediate nuzlocking. All you need to do is find the correct opportunity to actually make your setup. As I'm reading the script, I realized I forgot to put in a reminder for you to subscribe. So, um, uh, set, set, set up moves. Uh, uh, set, there's something there. Um, uh, make sure you are set up 
to get new video notifications by clicking the subscribe. Next up, we have reduction moves. Sometimes the answer isn't to buff your own Pokemon, it's to nerf your opponent. These moves are also often used in conjunction with setup moves. Reduce an opponent's stats and then switch to your sweeper and set up. Usually these moves will be used by some defensive support Pokemon that can afford to take the hits to help you set up a favorable position for another Pokemon. There's a ton of useful moves in this group, but one true game changer is Parting Shot. Parting Shot lowers attack and special attack by one stage each, and it's not the only move that does that. So why is Parting Shot in S tier while Noble Roar and Tearful Look sit all the way down in B? Parting Shot's real benefit is its value as a switch move. A slow Parting Shot can allow a defensive Pokemon to soak up a hit and then enable a teammate's sweep against something that would have otherwise threatened a knockout. That's utility that even moves that sharply reduce stats can't match. You basically get a two for one if you use Parting Shot. It's not super widely distributed, it just allows for much more safe and elegant switches, even if your Pokemon is faster than your opponent. Fantastic tempo tool right here. In general though, reducing attack and special attack at the same time isn't actually that high value, simply because most Pokemon that you face only use one attacking type, and even if they don't, they're only going to use one move because that move does the most damage to you. The two-stage reduction moves like Eerie Impulse and Charm can help neutralize big threats way more effectively. It's important to note that these moves, assuming you're faster, essentially pay for themselves the turn after because they reduce the incoming damage by half. So if you've used one Charm and you're faster, by the next turn you'll have taken one hit worth of damage, making the Charm essentially free. These are also really good tools to set up for a Shell Armor or Battle Armor user. This is a strategy most famously used against Brawly in the Emerald Kaizo Gym. Pretty much every attack reducing move can be useful though, even if it's just one stage. Growl, for example, has extremely wide distribution and has the nice benefit of hitting both opponents in doubles. Again, we are talking about niche situations here. Don't just use these moves in a 1v1. You use this with support Pokemon to lower damage output of a Pokemon and then switch to something else that can deal with it. Defense and special defense reductions are a lot harder to justify in my opinion, there's just not that many situations where they're actually useful, usually it's just better to attack. Speed reductions can be good, again with a defensive support Pokemon that's going to allow another Pokemon of yours to outspeed something. These moves get really bad if they're inaccurate though. Speaking of which, accuracy dropping moves are actually not that bad. Sometimes an accuracy drop is the only thing that can save your run, enabling you to recover a run that you otherwise shouldn't have. Also, if there's a strategy that gets killed by crits, these moves can actually help you reduce the chance of the crits actually happening because the opponent's Pokemon has a lower chance of actually hitting you. Next, let's take a look at status moves though. Let's break this one down by status condition. Confusion, for example, is just really bad. Confusion is just horribly inconsistent. There's always a chance of it doing nothing and you going minus one on turns. On average, I would say you get one self hit out of the opponent, which goes neutral in turn advantage and does a tiny bit of damage. It's kind of like a shitty fake out. No plan should ever include confusing your opponent. The only case where it's useful is if you're facing a situation where you're basically dead unless the opponent self hits two or three times. It can be an out in that situation, I guess. Sleep, on the other hand, Poor accuracy still makes most sleep moves not worth clicking, unless you're really desperate for an out. 55% on Sing, 60 on Hypnosis. If you're in a spot where you have to click one of these, you've either screwed up really bad, or you would have been fine even if you hadn't clicked it. But Sleep's ability to win you a free turn, and even more if you're lucky, makes it extremely valuable when paired with a consistency of 100% accuracy. Spore always goes at least neutral in turn advantage, because at least after Gen 1, the opponent is guaranteed to sleep for at least a turn. That's why both Spore and Yawn are clear choices for S tier moves. Yawn is interesting compared to Spore, because it doesn't give you the immediate benefit of shutting down an opponent. They're still always going to get an attack off the turn you use Yawn. However, it can be good for the one guaranteed sleep turn to be delayed. You can use it to get a free switch. If you're planning a fight and you can't find a way to get your fragile offensive Pokemon in, Yawn might be the way to go. Outside of sleep, the best status moves are the ones that give consistent passive damage. Outstanding in this regard is Leech Seed. Leech Seed is a Leech really good move. It's amazing. Being able to heal up, like, a sweeper. Yeah, especially, like, you could go in and heal up another Pokemon. Like, you could just keep baiting, like, different moves. Like, if you have an immunity Pokemon, a Pokemon with an immunity that's, uh, mm. that's, like, low HP, you could heal that up as yeah. well. You put Leech Seed on something and you start pivoting. I think it's an A-tier move. Will-O-Wisp avoids the C-tier fate of the other less accurate moves, thanks to the ability of the burn status to completely shut down physical threats. 
Willowbiss often sits on Pokemon that are very defensive. They have the turns to waste to maybe miss one or two, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend going for this in a competitive situation. And then you have some more unique moves like Attract and Parasong. Parasong to me has two distinct uses. It either guarantees a kill on an opponent's last Pokemon because they can't switch that out, or it can force a switch from an opponent, allowing you to set up a free switch or a kill on the incoming Pokemon. Attract isn't really justified in competitive settings where you can't count on having the, uh, the gender advantage, but in a Nuzlocke, you can plan for these sorts of things. Attract stands above confusion in my opinion because Attract doesn't wear off and is basically guaranteed to give you turn advantage over a long enough time frame. Up next, let's talk about weather and terrain moves. This one's gonna be pretty quick. Terrain moves are all really terrible outside of providing some really, really niche value. Weather moves in general are kind of useful for harder ROM hacks especially because a lot of the times you're facing opponents that have weather teams, so having moves to cancel out the opponent's weather can be good. It's kind of like field spells in Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess. The standout weathers are unsurprisingly rain and sun. Hail and sandstorm both land in C because they provide no direct offensive advantage. Rain gets put above sun in A tier because it's so much easier to build a rain team than it is a sun team. Gathering water Pokemon is just so easy in Nuzlocke because every route has a fishing or a surf encounter. There's tons of Pokemon that get swift swim. You have a surf HM so everything gets a powerful water move. Sun teams can be powerful, but they're just very rare to come across. And oftentimes, you don't even need to build a team around rain. You can literally only have a swift swim user that has rain dance and surf and have it do really, really well. Next up are screens and protection. You might recall from earlier that I'm just not super big on defensive setup moves, particularly on the special side. Just like those moves, screens are susceptible to critical hits. So why do both light screen reflect land and B tier here? It's the fact that screens remain both after you switch and after you kill an opponent. A defensive Pokemon can invest the turns to set these up for a more offensive Pokemon to take advantage of them for multiple opponent Pokemon as well. Aurora Veil is obviously superior here because it sets up both screens at once, but specifically needing Hail up for it just makes it more niche. Lucky Chant is kind of interesting actually, because in theory, it's really good. Some strategies are perfect if you don't get crit, so preventing crits for five turns actually seems really useful, as you've seen, consistency is valued extremely highly in Nuzlocke's, much more so than in competitive Pokemon games, because a Nuzlocke is a string of dozens and dozens of battles, and having something bad happen in one of those battles potentially influences all the other battles afterwards. But for some reason with Lucky Chant, I've just never been able to actually use it in any of my runs, and nor have any runners that I've talked to. I'm almost certain at some point someone will utilize this move to make their strategy more consistent though. Redirection moves are easy to forget about if you don't play a lot of games with double battles in them, but they can be absolutely monstrous. Because of the way that AI can be manipulated in double battles to always go for kills, you can set up lots of situations where Follow Me and Rage Powder just basically nullify your opponent's moves. Imagine a really simple situation where you're facing someone who has two dragon types, you have a Salamence on your side that you're trying to set up, and you have a Clefable on the other side with the fairy typing. The AI sees a kill on the Salamence with both of its dragons and will try to go for it, but because your Clefable is just clicking follow me, you can just lock the AI out of attacking you. If you can exploit the AI properly, Ally Switch in particular is in theory an absolutely crazy move as well. I think these moves are pretty high skill ceiling, but can achieve amazing things in the right hands. Endure is also a very fun move that can be useful to set up stuff like Pinch Berries or starter abilities like Blaze or Torrent, but you could just pre-damage your Pokemon to 1 HP if you want a reversal sweep. You don't actually need to endure for that. B tier is the best I can do for this. Quick Guard and Wide Guard can make for some fun niche plans and double battles if you really know what you're doing, but generally you're just not very useful. Next, let's talk about utility moves that just generally mess with your opponent. When it comes to stat manipulation, Haze is the only one that's really useful because especially in difficulty ROM hacks, there is always a chance to wipe to set up Pokemon and Haze can be a way to prevent that. It's pretty niche, but in those situations where you need it, you really, really need it. And there's pretty much nothing else that can do its job. I initially was going to put the moves that manipulate your opponent's ability into B tier, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized how niche it was. In the end, they just don't have quite the consistency that I want from a B tier move because your opponent's ability being crucial is just kind of rare. Don't get me wrong though, when you do need them, these moves are really useful and have saved me some runs. By far the most interesting moves in this section though are the ones that manipulate your opponent into using certain moves. Taunt is extremely valuable for the consistency it provides. I would definitely put this move in A tier. Being able to shut down status moves that otherwise stand in your way of executing your plan is so damn useful. Even just being able to allow like clean switches without having to worry about status moves or anything like that, Especially at the start of battles when you're trying to set up something, Taunt can be incredibly useful. Pretty much any move that can mess with your opponent's move selection finds a use though. Torment absolutely shuts down choice users, but also just like is really good for manipulating certain switches. 
The cream of the crop for these moves, and definitely S tier here, is Encore. This move is so broken. If you're faster than your opponent, you can basically infinitely lock them into using the same move. Remember that AI does not switch. If you know what you're doing and can predict the AI, this move can turn any fast Pokemon into a complete monster. You can use it to set up, you can use it to stall, you can use it to just lock something into a not very effective move in 1v1. It's super versatile and it's incredibly broken in the right hands. Spike can completely destroy choice users and force them to struggle. And Imprison is one of those moves that's really underexplored. I think this move has an insane amount of potential. It requires a lot of setup, it's pretty conditional, but if you can find the right strategy for this, this move can be kind of crazy because it can allow you to very precisely manipulate which moves your opponents can and cannot use. Disable is another move that seems really good in theory, but somehow I can never find a good use for it. If you're faster, you can get this move's effect off without even investing a turn because you might disable the move your opponent is going for, but... I just somehow never end up in situations where that's actually useful. Not everything can be categorized though, so we just made a category that had all the rest in it, so let's just talk about it. It might look like there's a lot of S tier moves here, but it's really just variants on recover. In hardcore Nuzlocke's, healing is just really, really useful and really valuable. In some weather conditions, Moonlight and Synthesis aren't as good, but th that usually doesn't come up. In general, just healing your own Pokemon if you can't with items is pretty damn useful. It enables stall strats, but it's also really good for offensive bulky Pokemon. It's just good. If your opponent can't deal 50% or more damage to you, you can just heal yourself to full eventually. Outside of these moves, there's Wish, which can just always be paired with Protect to become one of these moves at the cost of another move slot. Wish is a way to heal Pokemon that otherwise have no business getting access to healing, which is just so useful. Obviously, none of this applies if you're using healing items, but come on, who does that in 2023? Let's talk about hazards. I think all hazards are probably B tier. Hmm. Breaking Sturdy, Breaking Sash. Guaranteeing KO is on some ranges. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I've been able to use hazards quite often. There's also like Fortress and Emerald Kaizo. Yeah, that yeah. Some. And like a lot of Pokemon that get spikes are pretty darn bulky. Like Skarmory, Fortress. And it says that it just is, like it'll not cost you a lot to just set it up. Yeah. So you're thinking A tier? I think at least high B. The A tier hazards, Sticky Web and Toxic Spice can do even more though. One sticky web can ensure you have speed advantage the entire battle, and Toxic Spice can enable stall strats for you. We already talked about the value of pivot moves with Parting Shot, so here's a couple more of them. Free switches can just be so valuable, and Teleport does exactly that for you, placing it in A tier. Starting in Gen 8, Teleport has negative priority, so it'll always go last and lets you switch. That's exactly what you want from a move like this. Take a hit and swap to something else without it taking damage. In general, a lot of utility moves are good because they enable you to safely switch. This is the biggest thing that's not set up that utility moves can achieve for you. Baton Pass also sits here. I think the stat boosting from Baton Pass is really niche and doesn't actually come up that often, but just using it as an option to switch slowly is probably the most useful it can be. B tier here rounds itself out with a couple of speed control moves like Tailwind and Trick Room. Trick Room is more niche, but Tailwind doesn't last as long. Both of these mostly excel in double or triple battles in my opinion though. There's one more class of moves that we haven't talked about yet, and that's moves that call other moves. The most famous example of this is probably Metronome, which can call anything from Tackle to Self-Destruct, but there's a bunch of these in the game. There's like eight variations on mirror moves that steal different moves. Unfortunately, none of these are actually really good. Sleep Talk is good with Rest, obviously, and there's some fun strategies you can do with pre-sleeping. Me First can be pretty funny, but almost none of these will be actually clicked. Alright, it's time for the good stuff. Time for the top five. We've looked at 213 non-damaging moves here, which covers a ridiculous range of uses, but let's take all these categories together and look at what the five best non-damaging moves for Pokemon Nuzlocke are. Number five is Roost. We've already talked about healing moves, but Roost is technically the best one. The ability to manipulate the AI by dropping your flying type weakness adds another layer of utility to something that would be an S tier move anyway. Remember, the AI will never play around this move, so losing your flying typing is something that will almost always be an advantage for you. Additionally, most Roost users are naturally fast, and the faster the user of the recovery move, the better. Number 4, Substitute. Substitute is a broken move in pretty much every Pokemon context. You'll find it getting used in Smogon singles, in VGC doubles, and of course in Nuzlocke. Its distribution is ridiculous because almost every Pokemon learns this move. It can stall turns to fish for a miss, it can block a status move for you, you can use it to set up on a weaker Pokemon, it can enable pretty much any playstyle you can think of from aggro to stall and everything in between. It also allows for setup strategies that can actually play around crits because the substitute can tank the crit for you. Unless, you know, you forget to set it up. Substitute first. Select. 
Dude, you sub first. Don't risk crit. Oh no. Sub first. No! What makes it especially crazy for Nuzlocke though is that the AI cannot play around this move. It just can't. I'm pretty sure I've seen the AI in almost every generation of the games use a status moves on Substitute just completely wasting their turn. This makes it even easier to set up stuff with Substitute. It's just such a fantastic move and so abusable. Number three, Toxic. Can stall teams even exist without Toxic? I would argue this move enables an entire archetype of moves to exist in Pokemon Nuzlocke. Toxic will always be central to stall strategies, mostly because every Pokemon learns it. You can slap this move and leftovers onto any defensive Pokemon in your box and it instantly turns into a win condition for your run. Although to do that, you probably need one more move, which just so happens to be our number two spot. Number two, Protect. The only move that might enable stall more than Toxic is Protect. And Protect lands higher here because it enables so many other things. Between its use for double battles, where it's one of the best moves in the game, scouting if you're playing blind, enabling leftovers recovery, and stalling up PP, nothing can match the sheer utility. You can use this to deal with slakings, you can use this to deal with dig users, you can use this to stall out field effects, it's just, it's such a Swiss army knife of a move. And again, basically every Pokemon learns this move. But there's only one kind of move that towers above it all. Number one, Quiver Dance, Dragon Dance, and Shell Smash. Dragon Dance S tier? I agree. I, it's yeah. one, of, it's um, one of those moves where it's just like, it solo wins you fights, right? Because the yeah. best way to beat a Pokemon battle is to outspeed and one-shot everything, right? That is the safest way to beat a Pokemon battle, and Dragon Dance uh -huh. gets you towards that. Okay, so I'm kind of cheating with this one, but it would be boring for the top five to be three setup moves. These three are all good for the same reason. Boosting your speed and your attack is so damn useful and will get you to the point where you can one-shot anything you need to. Which one of these is the best is situational, but all three pretty much serve the same purpose. If I had to give the best one between these, it would be Quiver Dance. The ability to add bulk on top of speed and attack is just so unmatched. Obviously, it's learned by not as good Pokemon, but guess what? If you can set up to plus six in speed and special attack and special defense, it doesn't matter how shitty your base stats are. The most consistent strategy for Nuzlocke, if you don't ban it and you know what you're doing, is going to be set up and it's best done with these moves. And that's it. That's my list. As always, make sure to let me know in the comments which of these placements you disagree with. I'll make sure to not read a single one.